Hi, everybody. Dr. Doug Bowen, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books, a couple more on the way. I want to talk real quick about some vaccine information. All right. What I want to do tonight is just give you some quick bullet points about vaccinations. All right. Um, uh, overall, we know currently in the United States, we have the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. The Pfizer is a super cold one. Moderna is regular is uh, also cold refrigeration. Uh, but not the super cold one. These are messenger RNA uh, vaccines. I've, I've done a video, a very good video on, on, on messenger RNA vaccines. You can check that out on my YouTube channel. And um, in uh, Europe and England, they have the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, we can talk about that yet. We don't have that available here in the United States, the J&J &J vaccine. I don't want to talk down about Russian vaccine, the Sputnik. I don't want to talk bad about the China vaccine, but I'm going to tell you the Chinese, I'm going to tell you right now, the Chinese vaccine um, is about, it's a little more than 50% effective. They didn't actually run phase three trials. They tested it on their people. The same thing with the Russian vaccine. I can't imagine the United States buying any, either one of those. Maybe they will, but I don't think they will. But I know some other countries like Mexico and Brazil have bought the Chinese vaccine that is to date only about 50% accurate, uh, not, not accurate, 50% effective. All right. So expect the J&J &J vaccine and the Oxford vaccine to start submitting their data here in the next couple of weeks. So probably if not next week, then the first week of February, they'll, they'll submit their um, data to um, to um, the uh, uh, CDC, the FDA, and and seek FDA emergency use approval. So you're probably looking at and then another couple of weeks for that to approve and then to roll out. So you're really looking at and if you're in the United States, the Johnson Johnson and Oxford uh, vaccine vaccines will probably be available towards the end of February, beginning of March. But trust me, man, we need the doses. Okay, so that will take me to number two. In case you missed, we it. have a new new administration in office now. We'll see what they do. If they fuck up, I will call. I will call them out, just like I called the last administration out. But this is from the last administration. They led us to believe that there was a twenty million dose stockpile held in the back that they were going to release. Well, it turns out there is no stockpile of vaccines. It's all been released, right? And to date, today is, uh, what's today? January 23rd. There's been roughly 15 million vaccinations here in the United States, right? Um, and we are one of the worst countries <laughs> in freaking America. We're one of the worst countries per capita of getting these vaccinations into people's arms, these vaccines into people's arms. So um, the new administration has made a pledge of 100 million vaccines in the first 100 days. And when they made that proclamation, there weren't even vaccinations out yet. Uh, and last week, um, CDC says we're, we, are doing, we are doing roughly a million vaccines uh, a week. I mean, I'm sorry, a million vaccines, uh, vaccinations a day now. So there's a good chance we could get to 100 million vaccinations. Now, remember... Remember this, um, you have to remember there are the two dose vaccines, all right? So um, there's some data on this, but just to not confuse you, I want you to understand if you've had the Moderna and you've had the first shot of the Moderna, you've had the first shot of the Pfizer, you're not protected yet. I know they're, they try to talk about, well, there might be some initial, there might be 50, 60, 70% effectiveness. Listen to me, act like, if you've only had one shot, you are not protected. Please explain this to your friends and family because they get one shot and they think like, I'm Superman, I'm Wonder Woman 1984 all over again, bitches. No, you're not. And we're gonna, talk about that tonight okay um at, just trust me on this just act like like you're not protected right yes please comment if you know people who already are acting like they're protected 
Remind them, please share this video. Tell them they're not effective. But they say there's like, you have immunity. Well, you have an antibody response, but you you don't know whether or not, we assume because you know there are trials that you've got these neutralizing antibodies. But remember when you're, the, the immune system, whether you catch it or you're vaccinated, there's a foreign thing inside your body. Your immune system has this initial response of IgM and IgG. That's what my that's what these test kits test for. They have this initial response, but those antibodies aren't forever. They are meant to go up and down. They're meant to be produced and then degraded to go away, degrade, you know, to, to be eaten up. Because the last thing you want, if you imagine this, the last thing you want is to have antibodies all the time, wandering around, what the fuck am I doing? So you got to remember, antibodies are looking for bad guys. They are looking for shit to tear up. <laughs> They're troublemakers, man. They're good for you. I don't mean that in a bad way, but they have a purpose. And you don't want them like a bunch of hooligans in the streets at 2 a.m. They're going to get into some trouble. Amen, amen, right? In fact, that's a lot when we talk about autoimmune diseases. You have your my immune system is attacking me, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, things like that, right? Like you've got these, um, these auto-inflammatory diseases, you know, scleroderma, things like that, right? So you don't want to have a hyperactive immune system either. So these, these antibodies are meant to rise and to go down. The last thing you want is grandma or mom or a, God forbid, an essential worker, get one dose, think that you're protected and start acting badly and then catch it. So that's probably one of the first questions that um, we can answer is people go, Dr. Vong, you know, this person got a, 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 like a, a vaccination and then they caught COVID the week later. It doesn't fucking work. Uh, no, it's science. Hello. You're still vulnerable after the first dose. Okay. Is this helpful? Please. Please share this information. So you want to make sure you have your second dose, two dose vaccines, which will lead me to number four. Now, I don't care what these other experts, because I'm one of these quote, quote, experts, okay? Um, here's what I want you to remember, okay? Since you're watching me and you're smarter than the average person online, you have to remember it's two doses plus four weeks. You want to give yourself at least four weeks after the second dose. Okay. Give yourself at least four weeks after the second dose to make sure your body has an immune response, that you're really protected. Now, listen, they're not talking about this, but like you, we really need to have, because it's just too big of a deal. To, to see whether or not the vaccine has taken effect in our body. Now, we give the annual flu shots, you know, hundreds of mil you know, millions, like 90 million flu shots, vac vaccinations a year, but they never go back and check your antibody titers to see if you've had a response because it would be too overwhelming. So I don't expect them to do that with these vaccinations either, with the coronavirus vaccinations, but ideally, Ideally, we would need, we would really want a serology after the second dose, around three to four weeks to see if you've had this immune response. You can do that with these antibody test kits though. You can, they'll, they'll pick it up. They'll pick it up. And then you'll know for sure you're protected. But remember, antibodies are meant to come and go, but what stays? Who knows? So the ultimate purpose of getting a vaccination is this. It's not to have antibodies. This is a big aha for some people. Put a competent aha if this if this makes sense to you. The ultimate result of getting a vaccination is not to have antibodies. The ultimate result that you want is for your immune system to learn coronavirus and develop what are called memory B and memory T cells. You want your antibodies to go up and then go away, but down here, there are these little memory Bs and memory T cells floating around. 
So then what happens is um, when, when you are exposed to the coronavirus, it, it affects a cell or a presenting cell or your lymph nodes or your spleen, right? These are part of our immune systems. You, <laughs> you know, when you're little, who remembers this? <laughs> And you're little and you're like, my glands are swollen. My glands are swollen. They're not actually glands. They're, they're lymph nodes. Your lymph nodes are actually swollen because you get this bacterial infection, these sinuses. You have a response of this area for whatever it is. It could be the mumps, the meat, whatever it is that, that makes these swell up. You can get them in your, you have lymph node chains in your groin, your armpits. That's for those of you breast cancer conquerors, motherfucker, not survivors, not breast cancer survivors, cancer conquerors, motherfucker. Like um, if you've had, you know, they did sentinel lymph node injections for your breast cancer or they had to dissect out your, your armpits. That's actually what they're taking out is your lymph nodes because cancers travel through your lymph node um, and, air, and even if it's a stomach cancer or colon cancer, they're always checking your lymph nodes because that's where rogue cells will go. So if you imagine a virus, a cell that's been infected with a virus or, or the virus is kind of trapped, the lymph node system is kind of uh, the sewage system it, you know, of, 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 our, of our bodies. And so uh, this virus will get presented on these presenting cells and these memory beasts, these, these motherfuckers down here, these memory B and T cells, like, oh, I know you, you bad motherfucker. I get you. Ah, right. That's what you want. And then when that memory B cell, you know, like snaps onto that, to that, um, to that spike protein, then it causes a cascade of like the amino globulins come and, you know, interleukins. And that's, you know, you hear these IL sixes and blah, 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 blah. It's this huge immune response, right? And that's actually what happens with a lot of immune diseases where, you know, my body, my immune system's attacking myself. It's overactive for whatever reason. And, and fine. And actually one of the, in the early days, one of the, er, one of the things that became apparent, if you go back to my first video, one of my early videos about how coronavirus kills you, I, I talked a lot about like the cytokine storm. It's actually this immune response. And so people were getting really freaked out because they were hearing things like, oh, it's your body attacking itself. It's this, you know, so because we we try to, we kind of sci, sci fi it. It's basically this, you, this coronavirus causes such a large response that your body goes into this overwhelming sepsis. And that's what we don't want. So that's, that's what we, the goal of a vaccination is to memory B and T cells. So is that helpful? Yes, 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 yes. Helpful, yes, yes. Let's, I'm gonna do some rapid fire scenarios. So I already kind of did one. You, can, you get the first dose, you're not protected. You get the second dose, it's second dose plus four, okay? Plus four. So J and J is the only, and the the AstraZeneca the Oxford one is also two doses. So two doses plus four. J and J is a single dose. J and J is a single dose. So um, that's single dose plus four. J and J plus four weeks. You got to give yourself four weeks, and then you really want to check some sort of titers somehow. All right. Now um, let me ask you. Let me answer a couple other common questions right dr vong is it true that getting a vaccination doesn't keep you from from catching the coronavirus that's absolutely true yes no vaccines no vaccines actually keep you from catching it what they do is they mitigate your disease that means if you catch it either you don't it, remember vaccine we talked about this before right of uh, uh there's a family of viruses called coronavirus in, within that coronavirus, there are different strains, and each strain has to cause a disease. So this is SARS-CoV-2 causes COVID-19. And um, SAR, the first SARS or MERS virus, you know, causes the Mediterranean uh, respiratory syndrome, right? So you have these different strains. This particular strain is SARS-CoV-2, and the disease is causes is COVID-19. So the pathway, the, the vaccination, it's only the SARS-CoV-2, and, and it blocks, the vaccination blocks SARS-CoV-2 from causing COVID-19. Does that make sense? It doesn't stop you from catching the virus. Like virus, kind of, fucking virus is everywhere. 
Is this helpful? Any ahas? Can you understand this? Like if you, if I, if you explain it to your uncle Billy about how this works, like, duh. So some people are like, ah, I'm not going to take the vaccination because it doesn't keep you from stopping the vac catching the vaccine, like catching the, the virus. You have to go, duh, it's not supposed to. The virus is fucking out here. There's not like what keeps you from what decreases your chance from catching catching the vac the the virus. A mask, a mask, social distancing, hand washing. That's what actually keeps you from catching the virus. But once you catch the virus, the vaccine keeps keeps it from going on to disease. Is this helpful? Any ahas? It's like, oh my God, Dr. Vong needs to be on the daily talk shows. Does that does that make sense? Yes. So that a lot of people try to spin this into some sort of weird conspiracy. Like, why are they trying to tell me to take this vaccine if it doesn't even keep you from catching cor coronavirus? Like, well, fuck, it's not supposed to. Oh my God. See, got it. Yes. Aha. Makes sense now, right? Like, yes, this is good shit, right? Dr. V gives it to you good. Yeah, yeah, very helpful. Okay, good. So, so um, the whole purpose of the vaccination is if you catch the virus, which we know you can do, then it's going to keep it from either turning into a disease because your body responds to it quickly enough, or if, if it turns into COVID-19, it's a lower it's less severe, less severe disease. So, so instead of being hospitalized on a ventilator, you're not getting hospitalized. In fact, that's the number. When you hear people say, that when the television says it's 95% effective, well, that means there was 5% of people who actually caught COVID, who caught COVID-19, but both studies, I'm thinking off the top of my head, Moderna one, um, like none of them, had to be admitted to the hospital, which is what you want. You want to get over it, and none of them died versus the placebo who died, who got it, got hospitalized and died. We don't want the die part. You keep your die. We no die. Okay. We want to admit like, like I, okay, fine. I caught it. I'm one of the 5% who caught it, but I got over. That makes sense. Yes. Does this make sense? Okay. So, um, let me do some other common questions. Let me move on to a couple of other common questions because I want to, I want this shit to affect your life. Dr. Vaughn, why don't you do more COVID talks or more regularly? What time do you go on regularly? Like, I don't want to add noise. I want to come on when I have something that can help change your life or that's helpful. Right? So here's what I want to do to help you. So answer some regular questions. So let's, let me give you a scenario. Uh, right now, we are vaccinating. Most states are a little bit different, but let's say 75, 75 um, uh, year people older, right? Sorry, I had to block somebody. <laughs> All right. So let's say grandmother gets first dose. Y'all know this answer, right? Grandmother gets first dose of, we'll say Pfizer, we'll say Moderna. It doesn't really matter. Grandma gets her first dose. Question, can she go see her grandbaby now? Can she finally go see grandbaby and hug grandbaby? Who knows the answer to this? Who are the smart ones? First dose. Grandma wants to see grandbaby. Yes or no? Answer, no. No. Very good. No. Not protected yet. Grandma, not protected. You got to stay, stay home. No. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Grandma gets the second dose of Moderna. Baby, I got my second dose. I'm coming over. What's the answer? No. What's the answer? Who knows it? No. No. After the second dose, no. Four weeks. Second dose plus four weeks. All right? So grandma's paying attention. You shared the video. She understands it. She gets her second dose. She waits four weeks. Baby. Miha, can I come see my grandbabies? Can I come see my grandbabies? Answer. Depends. Depends. Because remember, she could still carry it. She could still have it. The vaccination is to keep her from getting sick. 
but she could still have it. And if she comes visits your family, she might give it to you. Now, a safe way would to do it, let's say she has a uh, vaccination, she gets a rapid test in her nose, an antigen test. Those are running about 250 bucks in a clinic, but she gets it, it's negative. Pretty good chance she doesn't have it. Go see grandbabies. But the problem, with the, remember grandbabies, and I know some grand, don't get mad at me. I know there are reports of little four-year-olds and little young kids getting sick and 10 years old and 12 year olds dying, but it's very rare. It's very, it's not likely. So if the goal is to them see grandbabies, then you're probably okay. And if, and if it's my family, for example, I'm 48, my BMI is 22. I don't have any other medical issues other than seasonal allergies, which I've been doubling up on my allergy medicine. Um, so if grandma wanted, got vaccinated two two doses plus four weeks and then wanted to come see her grandbaby and I'm healthy and my girlfriend's healthy and baby's healthy, wash hands. Yeah, sure. Come. I'm okay with that. Uh, it would be nice if we all got vaccinated, right? But we're not there yet. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? You have to decide. Now, is grandma coming and someone in the house is high risk? Is someone on oxygen? Is someone not healthy? Mm, I would wait till that other person gets the vaccine. Does that make sense? Uh, anyone who's high risk, I would wait for them to get the vaccine before coming to get it. Which takes me to the next question. Dr. Vong, what if everybody in that household has been vaccinated but I have not been vaccinated. Can I go visit them if they've all been vaccinated, but I have not been? You have to remember, well, the science is still out on that. Not that they'll, I don't think they'll ever look at that. Logically, that makes sense. But you have to remember, we are in the middle of a pandemic. In the United States, we are still at 200,000 cases a day, every fucking day. We are still averaging about 4,000 deaths a day. This is not a good time to be traveling. Even if they are vaccinated, you don't really want to expose yourself. You want to minimize the risk. Maybe if the numbers, I mean, it, it, it would be a different story if we had 10,000 cases a day. And maybe your particular little county that you're living in only has two, two or three cases a day. But if you're living in LA right now, why are you going out for pizza? Why are you going out to a bar? Yeah, does that make sense about the vaccine? All right, let me, some more common questions, right? Dr. Vong, I got the vaccine, I feel bad. This was early, right? Fever, chills, body aches, why? That's because, who knows the answer? Who knows the answer about that? It means your body is having an immune response. You want it. You want this sort of reaction. So some people think like, "Oh, I got I got the flu shot, and then I got the flu like like that night." No, no, that's the reaction, right? That's the reaction. It's a good thing. Yes, yes, the vaccine's working. See, I told y'all, y'all are smarter than the average people on the internet. See, yes. Yes, exactly. So you you expect to feel bad. Now that leads to another question, which is, you know, I, you know, I don't like to get into conspiracy theories, but y'all will understand it when I say this. It's okay to take fucking ibuprofen. What are, what the fuck is all this shit? Like, can I take an ibuprofen? I heard it doesn't. It keeps you from getting the vaccine or from help uh, letting it help. Dude, it's fine. It's fine. Your body's cells are going to react even though you take ibuprofen or Tylenol for your body aches. No, you want to let the fever go. That's different. That's a different scenario. That's not the case with a vaccine. The vaccine is a it's something artificial. It's not like you caught a cold and you want to work through the fever. You got to let her fever break. <laughs> Who had a grandmother like that? You know, when you're a little guy, let her fever break. That's different. You want a fever is a good response if you're sick. 
this is a vaccination. Your body is going to create this immune response, whether you have a fever or not. So if you have aches and body pains, take some Tylenol, take some ibuprofen. It's fine. It won't affect how the vaccine works. Does that make sense? Right? Comment if you know this, if you've heard people say, and sometimes you have to sit there and go, well, where, where did this misinformation come from? I mean, it might be from anti-vaxxers. It might be from mask holes. It might be. There are still people in here that say, yeah, but vaccines. This is who I had to block, right? Yeah, but vaccines kill people too. Vaccines don't kill 400,000 people, motherfucker. Like vaccines don't kill 2 million people worldwide. What the fuck's your problem? Yeah, sometimes you, I mean, we've had 15 million vaccinations in the United States and one unfortunate doctor who had a very well-known um, thrombotic event where, you know, th um, I, I don't remember the if they updated it. I think it was TTP. It's, uh, you know, it's this, con it's this condition where your body eats up your own platelets and you end up bleeding, bleeding to death. But, and I don't know if that's what happened to this poor doctor, but you've all heard the story. That's one case out of 15 million and 405,000 people are fucking dead. Does that make sense? I mean, it's ridiculous, right? Polio. I mean, just think about polio, chickenpox, smallpox. We, 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 we've forgotten smallpox killed millions of people. Does that make sense? But we eradicated it with a vaccine. Where, what the, what, where, what's your fucking response to that? People are so s silly. I was being all nice tonight, and then see, you get me talking about this shit, right? But, pe but people die for vaccines too. Stop it. Stop it. Grow up. Grow up, right? We're in a pandemic. It's time to adult. I know. I know, Uncle Billy, adulting is hard. You want it now. You want it your way. You know, you can't tell me what to fucking do. All right. Okay. So, um, so yeah, go ahead and take the ibuprofen and Tylenol. It'll, it won't hurt your vaccination at all. Okay. Next number. Um, common question. This is a big one. Promise me you won't get triggered. <laughs> you won't get bothered. The whole fetal, fetal cell discussion. Dr. Wong, I hear the virus, the vaccination has baby aborted fetus cells in it. Come on, stop it. Stop it. People are dying. Okay. Just because you don't understand science doesn't mean it's something tricky or non evangelical. You're not going to go to hell. So in science, we. Because I, I I had a culture in when I was an undergrad in um, at Rice, like there are established these are called established cell lines, okay, and a lot of these vaccines are coming from a aborted um, cell line from like the 1960s. So the baby was got was aborted anyway. This was the 1960s. And in science, we can replicate the stem cells. These stem cells can, we can keep this, this um, cell line going over and over and over and over again. And in fact, we have to document very closely like what they are and where they are in the family tree. Because sometimes, you know, in science, we, we try to manipulate it, you know, make it grow into muscle cell. That's what I did in undergrad. Uh, I had a, a mouse cell line that I tried to, manipulate by adding certain chemicals to see if it would become muscle cells, would it become nerve cells? You know, that's part of paying fucking tuition to go to school. Right. So this, so, but people hear this and they spin it into like, like every vaccine, some fucking fetus had to die. Like, what are you talking about? No, this is a cultured cell established cell line that's in science that we use. Does that make sense? Yes. Is this helpful? I mean, it's one of those arguments where you just want to like, oh my God, stop, stop. Just because you don't understand the science behind it. It's just like, wow. You know what I mean? I know rice is the best. Okay. 
All right. So, yeah, it's shit like this, baby killers. Like, what's wrong with these people? You know what I mean? All right. It's it's just dumb stupidity. All right. So, all right. So that's the fetal question. Um, now the um, the uh, J and J vaccination vaccine. You guys are about to hear about this. All right. Um, let me talk about this. Number six. Okay, let me explain this one to you really quickly. All right. Some people. Um, says stuff like this, like, um, Dr. Vong, the vaccines come from monkeys, yada, yada, yada. Like, uh, I've already explained, like, there are all these different vaccines, right? So the J and J vaccine, the Johnson Johnson vaccine is, is derived. The carrier type, it comes from a monkey adenovirus. And I'm going to explain why real quick. Just give me a second. If you go back to my videos about messenger RNA vaccines, the carrier, the whatever technique they're using to get you to have an immune response has to have a carrier. So for the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine, it's in a phospholipid bilayer. So a little fat droplet that has the messenger RNA inside of it. I've done a video with that. You can check that out. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses an adenovirus for a monkey that came from a monkey. And they've integrated uh, the spike protein into that, into that um, adenovirus. Now this adeno, now what they've done, and this is one of the cool fucking things about science. This is cool things about science. They took out the part of the adeno of the virus that allows it to replicate. So even though they're giving you this adenovirus, if they give you one adenovirus, you only get one adenovirus. Like it doesn't replicate. They took out the replicating mechanism, right? The, the coding strip that codes for the machinery. They took that out. So the, these adenoviruses cannot replicate. So if they give you a million in the vaccination, then that's all you get. They don't make more viruses. That would be bad. Okay. Now, what about, what about the monkey, Dr. V? <laughs> The fuck does that have to do with monkeys, Dr. V? So the adenovirus that they use is monkey adenovirus. Why? Who understands why? Who are my smart ones? Why a monkey adenovirus? Remember, coronaviruses is a family of viruses. Adenovirus is a family of viruses. And the human adeno, the, these are the common colds. We've been exposed to human adenoviruses every fucking season, every year for millennia. Every year it happens. Running a cough, <coughs> feel bad, call in to work, right? So you've been exposed to human adenovirus. So if we use, if they used a human adenovirus to deliver the Johnson Johnson vaccine, what are the chances your body is going to create a whole new set of antibodies against this coronavirus? Less likely, right? Because they already recognize human adenovirus and they already have, they will probably kill that motherfucker <laughs> before, before it gets an opportunity to do its job, which is to present the spike protein of the coronavirus so that we can build these memory B and memory T cells. Any ahas here? Remember back to what I said earlier, the whole point of vaccinations is to get to form memory B and memory T cells. Dr. Bong bringing it home for y'all, making sense now? So if, we, if they use human adenovirus, then your body already has antibody and memory B cells and T cells to it, and so we'll probably attack it. And it would probably never have this opportunity to form um, the spike protein. All right. So now, if you deliver it as a uh, as a monkey adenovirus, that monkey adenovirus is going to escape detection, right? Because I, I mean, unless you're like I don't know around monkeys a lot, <laughs> I don't know, like. They, they don't really cross affect us, right? So it will escape detection, 
but it can't replicate. It will make its way into a cell, but it can't replicate. And it will, and you can go watch my video. It will release, it will release that spike protein uh, DNA or RNA, RNA, and then get the spike protein will show up, get presented, and then that will cause the immune response leading to memory B and memory T cells. Is this awesome? <laughs> Science at its best. Brilliant. Exactly. So now you know what to do, you know, when people talk about, oh, it's a monkey virus. It's a blah, blah, blah. It's fetal cells. It's a blah. Now you know. Now you know how to answer these motherfuckers. Does that make sense? Okay. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Numbers are looking good. But we still have the New Year's wave that will come this week that we have to wait and see. If the numbers continue to go down, we're probably good. But that's 200,000 cases a day good, man. It's not. We were worried when it was 70,000 cases a day. We were freaking out. Okay. So we still need to hunker down. We still need to wear masks. We still need a social distancing. You're not a sheep. You're not sheep. Listen, I, I think it's so ironic that mask holes call call us sheeple because we're trying to adult, but they're the ones who ransacked the Capitol building because their leader said, you go to the Capitol. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that sounds like sheeple to me. You're being the, you know, your leader says, hey, gather at the Capitol. Look, gather here in D.C. and protest. So they go to gather. And then he says, march to the Capitol. So they march to the Capitol. And then he says, show force, because you got to win this over with force. And so they showed force. And yet somehow we're the sheeple. How does that even make sense? It's so ludicrous. What the fuck is wrong with these people? That's how, they're, that's how their brain works, though. And so you can't take them like, like, dude, like, I love you, man. Just mask up. You're human, too. I don't want to see you die, Uncle Billy. I don't. Uncle Billy. Just shut the fuck up, all right? You don't even know what you're calling. You're parroting. You're mimicking. You, you, you're you parroting back. You know what parroting means, right? You don't actually think for yourself. You're calling me sheeple because I'm because you think I'm not thinking. I'm thinking for myself. I know that this shit kills. I know that, that this shit, like, is bad. I know the science. I'm the one thinking. So you're the one who's actually the sheeple. I don't get it. I don't get it. You're just parrot. You're just repeating. Exactly. But I still love you, man. You're part of one, the only race that matters, the human race. And I want you to stay safe. Whether you believe me or not, just remember, two doses plus four weeks. That's what you need. Two doses plus four weeks. You're trying to build immune memory B cells and memory T cells. No, the vaccine doesn't, doesn't keep you from catching coronavirus. Of course. You're not getting me like, aha, I told you the vaccine doesn't even catch, keep you from catching the virus. What's the point? Like, you're not smart. Bison. You're stupid. You're not. Smart. It's made from fetus cells and supported cells. Like, you sound stupid. You're not being smart when you parrot that shit. You're being manipulated. <sighs> I got to stop. I was doing so good. Are y'all proud of me? Hey, hey. I saved it till the end. I lost it at the end, but I was doing so good. <laughs> I, was, I was doing so good for 45 minutes, y'all. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to even fucking read the comments. Love you. Be safe. Be good. Right. And um, love each other. Take care of each other, man. Even the mask holes. We're almost like, guys, six more months. This fall, if everything goes smoothly, this fall will be a new normal, relatively normal. You'll get back to hugging and it will fly by just like 2020 flew by, guys. You just got to stay safe. Take care of each other, man. Our frontline people, our nurses, our doctors, our aides, our techs, our EMTs, first responders. God, they're suffering. Our teachers, fucking scared. Come on, do the right fucking thing. Quit being a baby. You're not clever. You're a fucking asshole. Do the right thing. Love y'all.